Certainly is in the conversation with all the greats that have ever played the game. Mind blowing for somebody so young and yet the impact that that guy's had on the game. Mike Trout currently wearing an earpiece for us. He's in the on deck circle and getting ready as we start the bottom of the third inning. Leadoff hitter Brandon Marsh doubled his first time up and the first pitch misses badly. Thanks again for doing this Mike. We will not bother you once you get to the plate but we know you've said you're really interested in this concept. You think it works. I mean it's good for the fan base for the fans across the country just to see you know on field what's going on. Wish I was in center but got the DH today. Yeah we'll take the DH because it tends to lead to a little you know we get a little more insight. We, we wish you were in center field too but we'll take this. This is great. Our swings and misses at that one. Hey Mike can you explain to the fans the shadows. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Hey. You know you got to get a pitch to hit and you can't miss it. We'll see. Come on Marshall. Throw offline it drew Alonzo off the bag and Marsh is aboard. Yeah it's tough for sure. Especially picking up spin. These four o'clock games six o'clock games. See what happens. I don't think he had a real answer for why it's not in the one twenties. Because when he hits it it goes. They'll check first and punched out He's Trout. Crowd didn't like it at all. Watch Mike Trout right here. We talked about the shadows. Most likely, will could have gone either way, but ends up getting the call that he did go. He was pushing the other way, saying, "Come on, let me on base." <laughs> I understand? I have an earpiece. I got a microphone. I mean, this is an opportunity for the fans. Oh, for oh, for one with the earpiece. I don't know, guys. <laughs> I don't know, guys. <laughs> It's early. <laughs> hey, it's, it's, it's tough up there right now. Yeah, so you battle back. Just that, that pitch that sailed all the way to the backstop where Nito kind of flailed at it. Like, what's that like? I was just happy it wasn't coming like little up and in. It's even it. tough to get, get out of the way. Just can't miss your pitch. Had to pitch a hit on that, uh, that split. Yeah. Foul ball to the foul ball. Yeah. Right on it, yes. Yep. But. Hey, that's baseball. I'll say one thing, you look fabulous at those City Connect unis. Are yeah, they they're as, sick. Are they as popular as they look? Yeah, they're sick. I like them. They turned out really good. Really good. Brandon center field going back, reaching up, making a nice play is Jeff McNeil. And that will end what looked like a promising inning. Can't see spin, bro. I should have hit that split. You know? Second oh, Ah, uh, the one I fell back. A couple of seconds ago, Mike explaining to Phil Nevin the one that he thought he had a chance to hit. He told us before he went up, don't miss the pitch that you can hit. And that was the one offering he had a big chance on. He fouled it back. Eduardo Escobar leads off. Mike Trout joins us here on Sunday Night Baseball. All right, so Mike, I read the story of the young kid opening up the pack of baseball cards and found the Mike Trout signed autograph card. You can see you remember that as well. It went viral, and then you invited them to come see you play. What, what do moments like that mean to you? It means a lot. Um, I mean, you just got to put yourself uh, in his position. A Christmas present, opened a pack of cards, and got his you know favorite player. So I think uh, just to you know give an opportunity and. You know, it went viral on uh, social media. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty cool. And, you know, I was seeing his family and um, you know just just meeting them and taking pictures with them. It just uh, made the kids day. Was there a baseball card in a pack that you would open up and have that same reaction when you were a little guy? Uh, I didn't really collect cards, but I'm starting to. I'm starting to because I want to get a nice collection for my son. I was a, that was a, you know one of the things uh, you know, I've been talking about. Yeah. Just. Uh, when he gets a little older and understands what's going on, have a little package for him and uh, a little, little maybe like a gift for him. That'd be cool. Yeah. So will you give him one of yourself? Like this was dad. I got a. I'm collecting a lot of uh, Mike Trout cards, so <laughs> I got like I got a nice little binder for him. <laughs> How is Big Boy Beckham doing? What's that? How's Beckham doing? Uh oh. Uh -oh. That ball is hammered and tailing away and over the wall. That's a home run. J.D. Davis gets into his second of the season and puts the Mets up two to one. Top 
backspin home run from JD at 106 off the bat with a 26 degree launch angle that traveled 377 feet. JD Davis has not wasted any time. First pitch last time was a curveball. This time, fastball first pitch. Selling completely on it, looking up in the zone. This is where Sandoval has been so successful. And this is the first home run he's given up this season. First pitch and it belongs to J.D. Davis at 106 yeah. miles per hour. And it, admittedly in the shadows, it's difficult to time as you're going to get to hit here. So an about face puts the Mets on top two to one. Here's McNeil who singled on the first pitch. He saw his first time up. So you're collecting a lot of Mike Trout cards for Beckham. How is Beckham doing? <laughs> Beckham's Beckham's great, man. Uh, just a whole new perspective on life, and you know, after the game, it doesn't matter. You go over or four for four, he's still uh, still just give you that smile and that big hug, and uh, you know, it's been great being a father. Speaking of that video, which of course <laughs> went viral, you I mean, you were taunting him. Yeah, no, he's starting to get it. He's starting to play a lot of sports. He's starting, he's starting to get it. He's not, he can hit off a tee, you know, when I'm flipping to him. He's yeah. not swinging yet, but uh, I'll get him there. For people at home, how old is he now? He'll be two. Uh, <laughs> he'll be two. He's, he's one, he'll be two in July. So he's home watching right now, unless he might be napping. He what time is it? He comes to a lot of games, too? Oh, uh, he comes to every game, and he'll let me know when we lose, too, because he wants to come in that clubhouse after we win. I love that. Yeah. Is, that is that part of the rules? Yeah, I tell him. Yeah, he, he knows. Ahead, yeah, he knows. He knows if we don't win, he's not in. That, he can't come in the clubhouse. That's that's a great rule. I actually grew up with that rule with the Cincinnati Reds, the big red machine. If they lost, you're not allowed in the clubhouse. That was Sparky Anderson's rule in the clubhouse. I think it's great. Yeah, for sure. He loves it though. He's starting to, you know, give knuckles to the guys. He's starting to get more comfortable, and uh, <laughs> he he loves going in there. Uh, how about the name Beckham? Where did that come from? Uh, my wife had a lot of names, and then uh, you know we just fell in love with that one. Um, it just happened to be Bat. Um, you know when we picked Beckham, and obviously Aaron after uh, Jess's brother. Yep. Uh, the middle yep. name, so just happened to be Bat. You know, come from a baseball family. Uh, just uh, How yeah, about that? yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty cool. Now, because you're flipping them balls. You know, you were a great athlete, football, basketball, baseball. Is there anything you're you're hoping he does? You're just going to let him find his way? Uh, he's going to find his way. I hope he golfs. So. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Love golf. But no, he's 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 playing a lot of basketball. You know, there's a little hoop in the house. And he yeah. comes down. He just come on. That's on the two. ground. Yep. To that's third. Two. Rendon. That's an easy yes, two. Sir. with Neil. There you go. All right, Mike, we're going to take a time out. Obviously, hang with us. We'll come back. We'll talk much more about Beckham and baseball here in Los Angeles for the Angels with Mike Trout as we continue on a Sunday night. And he fouls that off. Finishing up with Mike Trout, who continues to join us, and we're grateful for that. Um, tell us a little bit about what this last week has been like here for the Angels, obviously, with Joe, and now we just heard from Phil. What's it been like? Yeah, now the guys, you know, are coming in and, you know, grinding. You know, we're, we're it's not like we we're coming here trying to lose. You know, right. we had a we, we got a great group of guys and we you know we were staying we were staying positive. You know, it was a rough stretch, obviously one of the roughest stretches I've been a part of. Yeah. But uh, you know like we I got we got a great group of guys. That, that's all that matters. We stayed together and we told we just kept staying positive. I mean it was it is what it is. It's over and uh, you know hopefully you know we can carry some of that uh, energy that we had last night into the end of the day. It's a reality check, though, isn't it, for everybody? For sure. You? This game's humbling, man. Right. This game's humbling, for sure. You know, when you feel like you're at the top, and, you know, all of a sudden, you, you, you lose a few in a row. Come on, baby. That so, jam that's shot. nice. That's, that's a nice hit in. right there. That's Matt Duffy right in on his hands. You know, everybody on your team gets asked what it's like to play with Mike Trout. What's it like to play with Shohei Otani? <laughs> Nothing surprises me with him. Um, I mean, he's seen it on full display the other night. You know, hit the homer to uh, you know take the lead, and then he, you know, it's just uh, it's special. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, baseball fans are, um, you know, it's happy to see that. You know, he's out there. Obviously, I heard Nevin's interview. You know, no. making sure he's out there every day and healthy. It's uh, it's important. Now Juan Lagares 
Squares to bunt. That's oh. high and a near throw down, but Nito holds it. He once told Buster only that you have some something in your pockets all the time. Grass, dirt, bubblegum wrappers. <laughs> we, we, we have anything in there tonight? No, I haven't been out in the field. So I can't <laughs> grab nothing. Uh, yeah, no, it's just uh, I'm superstitious a little bit. As you as you guys probably know, I don't know. I don't know where you heard that. I don't have to talk to Buster. <laughs> we'll send him. We'll send him over. <laughs> All right. How's your relate? You know, Eduardo Perez has a very good relationship with your buddy Jim Cantore. Were you aware of that? I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're tight, and uh, Jim wanted to be with us. As a matter of fact, tonight. What um? Talk to us about the weather because you're in a place where the weather is pretty much <laughs> consistent. But you love the weather. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I like uh, obviously the off season. Uh, you know, back east uh, in Jersey, I get you get season, so it's you know in the winter it's cold and love snowstorms. Love uh, especially traveling in the Midwest. Obviously, see them thunderstorms. Um, you know, my dad got me into it when I was a kid, and I just uh, I loved it ever since. And obviously, Cantori keeps me updated when when. Uh, when storms are coming, and yeah, we've we've got a great relationship over the years. So that, that's like a, a fast text. When there's bad weather, he immediately reaches out to Mike Trout. No, I'll, I'll shoot him a text. Hey, what's what's going on with the storm? And I'll, I'll send him a text. Like I, I'll see a storm that's like two weeks out. He's like, the models are going to change a thousand <laughs> times. But I get I get so excited. Yeah, I'm like a little kid when that when that stuff comes around. And we've seen your tweets. You always put the airplanes on trips. What's the significance of the airplanes? I have no idea. I just always done it. Um, just missed that. Uh, there's nothing behind it. I you know, just uh, just always done it, and I don't know. Mike, the Eagles open up against the Jets in Week One. How are your Eagles going to be looking like this season? They're looking good. How we uh, how we did a good job in the draft. Love love what he did. Uh, they got a good team. Obviously, you know, with uh, with Dallas being in the division and New York getting better. Huh? Obviously, Redskins as well. It's just uh, I'm a, you guys know I'm a huge Eagles fan, so oh, yeah. I'm, I'm picking them to win. I'm, I'm picking them to win the Super Bowl. You know that. Fantasy football commissioner. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not. No, I'm not going down that road. My point was going to be Eagles fan. There are other guys in your position who ended up owning teams. Any interest in ownership? Owning a team? Yeah. I mean, down the road, I'd be probably sick. You know, after I'm done with right. baseball. Uh, I don't know. Definitely, definitely be uh, interested for sure. No, I wasn't going to go into the. Uh, you throw it out there just to see what I'll say. You know that. I know. I, I know. I know how it goes. It's but not yeah, easy, that's not a, easy that's being a, a commissioner, is it? No, 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 no. That's a, that's a legendary fantasy football league right there. Boys, look. So, all right. So, you brought. What makes it legendary for those of us that aren't in it? Well, I mean, it's it's the talk of the town right now. How many people are in it? Uh, it was 12 of us. Is there expansion? Is there a need for expansion in that league? I'll tell you right now, uh, probably getting another commissioner. But <laughs> no, there's definitely a waiting list now. Everybody's calling me, texting me, saying, "Hey, what's up with this league? How do I get in?" Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's gonna be. I think we got something. We got something brewing for next uh, next fantasy, you know, next football season. We got something brewing. A couple of guys. Now, as commissioner, are you a participant? Are you a team owner in fantasy? Oh uh, yeah, I was. I had a team for sure. I didn't win. Have you won? Not that league. It's the first time we did it. Oh really? Yeah. Well, it was obviously cutthroat. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was. Uh, like I said before, you know, people, guys are diehard fans of football. I'm, I'm myself included. Just, uh, just love, you know, obviously love other sports, and we all compete. Okay, I'll ask it. Who won then? <laughs> Um, Alex Bregman. Ooh. Now, 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 now I, I'm gonna, I told you that. Now you're not gonna go ask him questions about this league because it, it's obviously over. <laughs> That's true, but we do have him next week. Oh, yeah, you can ask him then. No, no, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. But he won it. Yeah, he won it. But it's, it's, all, it's, it's all good stuff. Uh, yeah, a lot of guys play fantasy football. Yeah, I don't think I've. I don't think I know a clubhouse that doesn't play fantasy football. So. Yeah, I agree. And, and 
and, and March Madness pools come springtime when it's the NCAA oh, yeah. tournament. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. For sure. It's good for the guys, too, get everybody involved. Adam Wainwright big into that. Were you once like a, a free ESPN League fantasy guy? What's that? Were you ever on the ESPN League? I think that's what we ran. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's what we ran. I think that's why there was some confusion because that that website wasn't. Ah, I can't say that right now. It's an ESPN game, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was. Uh, yeah, I think it was ESPN League. I'm in. I'm in like four leagues, so. Yeah. I forget which one it was. You know, Mike, on the field, everybody when when it's. It's like the Angels, people make a big deal about Mike Trout's years and they're wasting him and they're not in the playoffs. Does that stuff focused on you get old? How do you handle that? Um, I mean, yeah, it gets old. I mean, I'm obviously, I want to get to the playoffs. Um, you know, the front office this year, and obviously with bringing in Perry, you know, it's uh, the mindset of get, bringing in great players, great, great contributors. And, uh, you know, Perry wants to win. And everybody in this in this clubhouse wants to win. We got a great team this year. He did a great job in the offseason bringing guys in, and uh, we got a great relationship. Okay. What's it like watching your buddy Albert Pujols from afar? <laughs> I was the best man when I I was on the plane when I got an alert saying Albert Pujols uh, <laughs> pitching pitching. <laughs> you know that's uh that's pretty cool stuff. Um, you know, but just uh, the way Albert is, you know, he, obviously all the stuff he's done on the field is unbelievable. But yeah, he's just a better person, man. I, can, I, I built a great relationship with Albert, and uh, you know, he's uh, he's a great friend. So Anthony Rendon once against Brett Phillips hit lefty and hit a homer. Now I remember <laughs> in high school I read you beat your whole team in a derby hitting left-handed. Would you ever do that in a game? I would never hit left-handed. No. I beat my, my one of my buddies, uh, Brian Furman, was talking a lot of smack, and, I, and uh, he was like, "I'll beat you in the derby." I said, "I'll hit lefty, and I'll beat you, bro." And I, and I, oh boy, and, and I, you did. Uh, yeah, I smashed him. He knows it too. He's probably watching right now. Laughing. I'm sure he's delighted to be out there now. For sure, he knows it. He had to wear a little. Uh, I won't, I won't get it. I had to. <laughs> never mind. There's a little side bet. Yeah, a little hey. side bet. <laughs> let, let me just ask you this. Was it worse than the Lady Gaga outfit you had to wear in 2012? Ah, uh, I mean that was tough. Tory, Tory made me. He ain't made me wear it, but you know, Tory picked that outfit. And then, uh, not only that, the big baby I had to wear with the diaper. I had to wear that on the plane, <laughs> two and a half hour flight. He talked about being comfortable. Oof. So two and a half hours, you're wearing a, a, a diaper on a plane. Yeah, it's terrible. But like, he's, like when you come, when you come up, you got to do that stuff. You know, I think yes. if you start, if you start complaining about it, they're just gonna, the veteran guys is gonna wear you out. So yeah. I, I had fun with it. I enjoyed it. It's, it's stuff you got to do. You know, that's how you, uh, you know, learn some, you know, earn some respect from your, te <laughs> your teammates. You know, you don't, don't want to fight, fight that. Tyler Wade is gone. Mike, thanks so much for the time. I'm sure the people at home are delighted to get a chance to see who you are as a person, and we really, really appreciate it. For sure, for sure. No problem. Thanks so much. That's Mike Trout, of course, the Angels superstar, joining us here on Sunday Night Baseball. It's 2-1 Mets. We're through 4.